Hey, it's me again, Ken. Welcome to my podcast, Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effective working out of the will and calling of God in each of our lives. Sometimes I like to do what I call shorties, that is, short messages that give you a boost that will outlast whatever the day brings your way. This is that. So now let's go before we are late for our meeting. Today's message is titled, Doubtful, I Will Be at the Meeting. It is a play on words, as it is a message about doubting Thomas and his buggered up schedule that cost him a moment. Boom blasters, here we go. MIA, and that's okay, says Thomas, who ended up with the dubious title, Doubter. The following scripture story tells us of an event or of a meeting that took place. A meeting that Thomas had missed. Now we don't know why he missed it, but we do know that in doing so, doubt had crept into him. Let's take a look. In John 20, 18, 22, we see the whole story. We begin in verses 18 and 19. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. In John 20, 20, it states, When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 21 and 22, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So now we see in the story that they, that is, those who made the meeting, were given a gift. How cool would that experience have been? Well, let's ask Thomas and get his input. Oh no, he wasn't there. But wait, we see something that can get away from us if we are not paying attention. You see, I have seen this with church people so many times that it's difficult to count. For example, I have been at meetings where God showed up. Tangibly, he was in our space. Sometimes he would just hang out, and at other times he would perform a sign or a wonder, and yet at other times he would speak an encouraging word to someone in the group. This is nothing less than the gift of prophecy at work. You see, in these moments, no one wants to go anywhere, at least those who have entered in. They just want to stay in his presence. You see, if you are walking in, pressing and leaning into Jesus, he will come around. If you are gathered together, as Matthew 18.20 spells out, then he will show up. All it takes is an interest in him, and voila. I have heard all of the excuses. I have to work tomorrow. I've got to go to bed. I'm tired. I have things to do. Doesn't this sound like the crew that was asked to attend the wedding supper? Outwardly and for show, they would tell everyone that they would live and die for Jesus. But in action, when it came time for the rubber to hit the road, when the meetings were scheduled, all were found with an abundance of excuses as to why the presence wasn't worth the cost. You can read Matthew 22, 1 through 14 for more on this. So in John 20, 24, Jesus took roll call and found Thomas to be missing from the meeting. Now in John 20, 25, the disciples had shared that Jesus had stopped by, but Thomas did not believe them. Now get this, all of the stories that Jesus told regarding his resurrection and return couldn't find a place in Thomas's heart to land. Thomas wouldn't believe it. Doubt had crept in because Thomas missed the meeting and the impartation of the Holy Spirit that the others who were at the meeting had received. Now but Jesus is always on the lookout to help his disciples grow. And so he came back for another visit just to get Thomas back on track. We see this in John 20, 27 through 28. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hands here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Now in verse 29, we see that Jesus does not waste the opportunity to teach us. If you read it, you must feel encouraged even if you miss a meeting. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. What's the teach? Believe even if you don't see. He is alive and active. In fact, one could say that even though he is not down here, he is more active about the things of God than we are. Okay, but what he is not saying in this message is encouraging us to miss the meetings. Nope, he is simply stating that we remain blessed, not seeing him, as long as we remain in belief. At some point in your ministry, you will miss a meeting. Be encouraged and remain in belief. The practical lesson, though, is not to miss the meetings, so you can hang out with him when he shows up. And he will show up when two or more are gathered. You see, in Matthew it tells us so. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Well, that's it for today. I hope you really enjoyed the teaching. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with. 
It's what you can take away from it. If you feel the message would be helpful to others, then I ask that you be the witness that you've been called to be and invite them to the podcast. Use this teaching as a part of your ministry to impact the world for Jesus. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of lights to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.